Hey there 8-Bit Anarchists, my name is Roscoe and here we have my retro review of Top Gear 3000 off the Super Nintendo. I wouldn't normally bring you the intro sequence but when I did this yesterday it struck me as being so laughably cheesy that I had to bring it to you for the winner, the riches beyond belief, blah blah blah, knowledge of the races, passenger, it's a car race basically. It kind of implies that it's out intergalactic, blah blah blah. You know all this nice green as if you're in a spaceship and all these solar system type pictures and all this shit, it's just a car racing game. Um, graphically, it's as you'll see, it's a lot like the original Top Gear and Top Gear 2, which have nothing to do with the BBC TV program by the way. It's alright, it's along the lines of like the original Top Gear or Chase HQ without shooting, or uh, what's it, Outrun. Just not quite as nice looking. I didn't. I, I wasn't sure what I was doing here, so that's why I checked everything. It what did strike me as odd that I was using. I think it's X to accelerate. The top one. So here we go. Interplanetary racing. You would think that you know maybe. Oh look, we've got a car. So maybe they were strange alien-looking vehicles with four wheels and stuff. No, they're just ordinary-looking cars, and we're supposed to be on some strange alien planet. And hey, presto, we're in. You know, Wisconsin or Wyoming or somewhere, looking at the Rocky Mountains with grass and green trees and everything you get on Earth. That's me fucking up the accelerator. Um, there are a couple of unique things on this one, actually, I will say. I, the turbo I fucked up on. The handling of the cars is pretty good, actually. It's quite forgiving in as much as you don't have to hit the apex. I wondered what these red, this red thing was. It says recharge, and I didn't know what it meant. So I didn't bother actively going out for it. Um, here we are, the handling. It is quite forgiving, I'll, I'll say. You know, if you bump into another car, you're not stopped in your tracks. If you go off the track, you don't slow down terribly. There are coins, it turns out, you can pick up. Um, in the second race, you'll see we do. Uh, there's actually coins you can pick up for additional money. Like I say, I was avoiding this red strip. I didn't know where we go. So I bump into someone, and you don't slow down a great amount. You know, in fairness, there's 20 cars on the track, which is quite good. You know, you're playing your Mario Karts and your street races of this world. There's only eight, you know, seven opponents, and even a game I reviewed recently, my own channel, Rock and Roll Racing. There's only four cars on the track. Now, I, I will say the graphics are a bit more demanding for that, so hence the, the lack of cars. But there is no real challenge. I didn't, I, I didn't go onto that recharge bit on purpose. But if you notice, I have a green strip on the far, the bottom right hand corner. One thing that these alien cars do have um, is electric engines. It turns out. So the green meter going down is effectively it's a petrol gauge. It's actually a battery meter, but it doesn't come into play on this race. The, the, the laps are so short, um, I managed to get the hole without noticing. I don't know what that repair thing means. Um, I presume you can bash your car about a bit. I presume on the top left-hand corner there's a green kind of track-looking thing. I'm guessing that's like a damage meter. Anyway, I win the first race quite easily. Like I said, go back to the handling. It's quite forgiving, you don't have to hit the apex of a turn to get around it, and you can hold, certainly in the settings the car's on now, you can handle every corner that it throws at you at full speed, as long as you get it relatively. I don't know what these secret bonuses are, there's two secret bonuses I got money for there. Um, it's a league affair, I, don't, I presume you win money for winning the league as well, I didn't. I only did two races, so here we go, more intergalactic shenanigans, get in a spaceship and off we go. Your handling's pretty good, it, well it's fair, I'd say. Um, you, know, you don't have to hit everything dead on. Going off the track doesn't mean you come to a complete standstill. So it is fairly forgiving. I think I'd have been pissed if I'd have paid 40 quid, 50 quid for this back in the day. Uh, it's not, I mean, the first two tracks were a piece of piss. I've not tried to get any further on. So here we are. Into a different planet on the solar system. This one's orange. It's called, what's it called? Mazia. So at this time I do upgrade my engine. Um, I had a few quid to spend. Here we are. 2.3. I don't know what electric means, but anyway. I did upgrade the engine to engine 2. FT11 Pulse 320. Anyway, it's just dropped 150 grand on that. It is a bit quicker. It does make a difference. I've not. I didn't go into all the tyres and stuff because I didn't have time. So, this is supposed to be an orange planet called Maya and it looks exactly like Nevada. Death Valley. The track's a bit more interesting this time. Obviously, not just a square loop. Um, I'm not sure what I was doing there. So this, in this race though, this battery thing does come into play, so it does add a little bit of strategy, as in you do have to hit that recharge thing. I think it's this one where I find the coins, um, you know, there's a bit of up and down in the maps, in the tracks rather. 
and I, did, I think seem to remember it took me quite a while to actually catch up with the leaders on this one so they did seem to sprint off quite a lot further in front of me this time in, in the first race there, there's loads of coins I just went past there uh, I do collect a few of them in the end when it's a scoot past those guys I mean like I said I bumped into that guy and I lost about 50 mile an hour so and there we go I've gone off the track a bit and it's not crippling me hit me turbo boost oh, I don't know what that's supposed to be I mean if it's an electric engine I'm not sure what you're burning there but anyway that's another story I think I just missed that guy then so I'm doing 190 I think the maximum speed on the old engine was about 168 or something um, in the tracks I've just collected a lot of coins there the tracks are okay the graphics you know it's a Super Nintendo game I'm about to run out of battery power now so why I start slowing down because my meters flashing red now in the bottom right and I'm pretty sure my back I start slowing down there we go the speeds dropping off a bit oh I managed to recharge it that time and it does drop off anyway and sound wise it's a bit plinky plonky cheesy stuff kind of lazy 16 but there we go that's all that money I collected kind of um, cheesy 16 bit crap basically it's nothing special it's certainly not on a par with the likes of rock and roll racing let alone Castlevania or Secret of Mana challenge wise I mean I did the first three races and it wasn't particularly difficult I mean there's 20 cars on track in theory and um, you don't actually bump into them all at the same time they don't appear to give it's not one of those games where no matter how fast you are the you know the cars will keep up with you if you're thrashing them into the ground then you will thrash them into the ground and you'll open up quite a big lead now there's my battery's just gone so my speed's dropping off now because I've got no juice in the battery so it does add a little bit of strategy to it which I thought was quite not bad for a 16-bit game you know graphically it's not really pushing the Nintendo that much all the imagination and I'll recharge my battery a bit get up to full speed Um longevity I think it's the sort of game I would finish and then never play again I'd just swap it I'd give it six and a half seven out of ten it's not massively original it's not like Chase HQ where it adds the the factor of you know acquiring gun and shooting a baddie once you get to the end of the level uh, so it's just a, another racing game it tries to add in a bit of spice with the intergalactic setting but all the backdrops look exactly like somewhere on America um, presentation wise it's okay so I'd give this 7 out of 10 anyway guys thanks for joining us on 8-bit anarchy uh, hopefully you'll join Scott Hindle, Yak and myself and um, Zebra and Raven Valor sometime soon uh, I'll catch up with you guys later take it easy bye